Let me just tell you that I come from a background that completely antagonized Catholicism. So I understand how hard it can be. But trust me, a lot of the things that I knew or that I thought I knew were completely false, off base, and told by people that were simply enemies of the church. What's going on everyone? Welcome back to the channel, The Jewish Catholic. For this video, I'm going to be sharing a little bit about my story. I got a lot of people that ask me either here or online to share. And even though I already have videos talking about myself, they're usually in somebody other's channel. But today we're going to do this in this channel and in a shorter version. As I mentioned before, I have talked about my story, how I ended up Catholic in other channels. But I wanted to do it in mine because I get so many people asking me, how did I end up here from my background? Some people know a little bit. Some people have no idea who I am, what I do. Some people don't even know I have a YouTube channel. And that's usually the people that interact with me on my Instagram channel, which if you're not following, make sure you follow me right there on Instagram it is Instagram at the Jewish Catholic. All right. So I'm going to try to make this a shorter version of the story. So because of that, Please understand that there's not going to be some type of apologetics when I share this. It's simply to share how I ended up here where I am now. Starting from the very beginning, I guess I should introduce myself. My name is Daniel and I was born in the Bronx, New York. I come from parents that were born in Central America. Before that, if you trace our lineage, our family splits off in two main areas. Number one from the Central America area, from the Maya and the other side of the world is from the Iberian Peninsula. So that's going to be Spain and Northern Africa and a little bit of the Ivory Coast. And not to go all the way back to that, I'm going to bring it back to the Americas where my parents were born. My parents were raised believing in God, but not necessarily practicing anything. It wasn't until my family moved to New York, where I was born, that they ended up having their encounter with God. And they ended up becoming part of a Protestant Pentecostal church. And though we moved out of New York, ended up in Puerto Rico, then moved around some more, we were practically always part of that same organization, that same Protestant Pentecostal group. Now, throughout that time, there were occasions, because of our moving around so much, that we had to go to other churches that were not part of that group. And that included groups that were Seventh-day Adventists, different Baptist ones, and other churches that I can't really remember what in the world they were. But that's part of what I was able to experience. One of them, just to give you an idea, it wasn't just going there for one day. I was part of a Baptist private academy for a little bit. Now we're going to fast forward to the point where things really started to switch up. This is when I moved out of my family's house at the age of 17 to begin college. And during this time, like pretty much every college person, I was broke and I had not a lot of money. I didn't have a car. And because of that, I ended up living in the same place where I worked. And I'm talking in a very literal sense in this location, in this job, there was a back room and that's where I lived with mice crawling on top. Everything smelled really weird and that's pretty much my home for a while. During that time, I wasn't just in a financial low. I was also in a very spiritual low and there were a lot of things going on in my mind. And though you couldn't really see it from the outside because I'm generally a pretty happy person, there was a lot of struggle going on within me and it had to do with why do I believe what I believe? Why do I live this lifestyle that I live and where do I come from? Uh, if you... Now, in another video at some other point, maybe I'll share a little bit about my family history, um, but just to keep it short, it's a crazy history. And that caused me to want to check on my DNA, my background, checking the family last names. And throughout that research is when I found out the Jewishness of my heritage. There was a lot of Jewish heritage that I really wasn't too familiar with, except for little things here and there that I had figured out on my own prior. But now I had something that I could hold on to to say, oh, now I know where my family comes from. And this helped me to understand where the Sephardic background in my family comes. That's the Sephardic Jews, the Jews that were in the Jewish diaspora, mostly centered in northern Africa and in Spain. So that's where my Jewishness comes from. But faith-wise, I still practice a lot of what I practice just simply because that's what my parents believed and because I was raised that way. But during this time, again, I was questioning everything and 
as I was questioning, I started researching about uh, whether God is even real and different belief systems and why is it that I live the way I lived. A lot of things didn't add up. And through this process, when I was looking at all these different beliefs, some of them were quite easy for me to discard as just either myths or incorrect or invalid because of the lack of evidence that they had, whether it be historical evidence, scientific evidence, or whether or not it made sense philosophically or just logically. And as I did this, I was just basically trying to find the truth. And I know many of you could relate. So if you do relate with me in this point, make sure you give this video a thumbs up and let me know what was that search like for you. Going back to the story, as I was researching through all of these things and to make the story short, I basically ended up concluding that, yes, there is a God by necessity. There has to be a God because everything had to come from somewhere. And that was the best explanation. It had to be something that was outside of time and space, outside of this dimension in which we exist. And it has to be something so powerful that has the ability to create things from nothingness and also be personal in the sense that this force must be able to act on its own will. So being personal, being uh, almighty or powerful, being beyond time, space, and matter, that was part of the understanding of why there is such a thing as God. Now, of course, there's a lot more that goes into this argument. And again, this is not an apologetics video, so I'm not going to dive too much into that. But after that, it was a time for me comparing uh, other belief systems that were aligned with believing in God. And everything else that was polytheistic was scratched off because by necessity, God would have to be only one. Otherwise, that which one is the strongest, which one is the most powerful? To be the source of all, there can only be that one God. Moving on from that was looking at the major religions that preached one God. So we're talking about Islam and Judaism. We're talking about the different Christian uh, theologies that are out there. And while I did all of these things, a lot of these didn't make sense, but some did, like Judaism started to make a little bit more sense, and Christianity did too. And then when I started to involve history into the account and archaeology, that's when Christianity really started to blossom. Along with that came the understanding that the scriptures, the Bible, is a truly reliable source of literature due to the incredible amount of scholarship that has gone into it and the manuscripts that are available and just the history that is found outside of the scriptures themselves that back this up. So again, making that whole process shorter, I end up understanding this. God is real, the Bible is real, and it makes sense that Jesus is real too because of the historical evidence that follows that. And again, I repeat, this is not an apologetics video, so I won't dive into that, but that's basically the route that it started going down in. And then I got to the point in which now what I had to do was compare what I was seeing versus what I was living. This is when things really, really started to change for me because of the fact that when I was questioning all of these things in my life and I compared what I saw in scripture versus what I was living, I could see the discrepancies in worship, for example, in which everything that we were singing about or talking about and preaching, it always seemed to be very self-centered. It was all about my season, my blessing is coming, how God wants me to uh, be profitable, how God wants me to be successful. And I wouldn't even count that as a prosperity gospel per se, because Compared to actual prosperity gospels, it's very, very not that and not so extreme. But still, it seemed so self-centered and I didn't see this desire to just simply worship God because he's God. So it really bothered me and it continued to catapult me into this deeper research into what I was living. And some of the things that I started to figure out that were completely off in my faith versus what I was seeing in scripture were the notions of sola fide and sola scriptura. And for those of you that are not familiar, sola fide is the teaching that comes from the Protestant realm that teaches that we live by faith alone, essentially in a very simplistic sense that we are not getting closer to God necessarily by what we do, but rather by what we believe. And on the other hand, with Sola Scriptura, that the scriptures are the final authority for a Christian. So basically everything that revolves around your faith must come from scripture. The issue with both of these is that they're completely anti-biblical. For one, when it comes to Sola Scriptura, the Bible never says that we live by the Bible alone. So it seems really weird that if this book requires us to stick to it, it why doesn't it say it? 
anywhere on it. In addition to that, we can see the pattern in which God has always guided his people. It has always been, yes, some that is written scripture, but then there has always been this oral tradition, and there has always been an actual governing body composed of men which God placed as authorities for guiding his people. But when it comes to sola fide, we get another contradiction because of the fact that the scriptures themselves say that we do not live by faith alone. So how can we say that we do if the scriptures really explicitly say that we don't? And in addition to that, throughout the history of the people of God, we have seen God's requirement of us to live in a specific way, which is obeying his commandments. So in the mixture of me being a believer in God, a believer in Yeshua, Jesus as the Messiah, and me understanding more about my Jewish heritage, you mix these things together and the logical outcome, to me at least, is Messianic Judaism. And that is the route that I started to take. And in this journey, I really began to learn a lot more about my Jewish background and also about Judaism itself. And it was an incredible journey. I learned so much. And the more I dove into it, the greater it became. But at the same time, I came back to one of the issues that I had seen in that Protestant world, which was the fact that still in that, there was the issue that everybody could interpret whatever they wanted using scripture. So that means that like in the Protestant world where everybody can say, you know, we are led by the Spirit of God and yes, we're going by the Bible. We have thousands of denominations. We have the same issue happening in Messianic Judaism, which is, there are different groups, and when I used to visit different communities, I would see that there wouldn't be small doctrinal issues, but we're talking about larger things like, what does it actually mean to keep kosher? Which feast do we keep, and what are the actual requirements that follow keeping that feast? In addition to that, we have bigger and bigger issues such as the Trinity. Is God one singular person or is God three persons, one Godhead? With all of these things being juggled in my mind, it led me to this search for authority. Who is it the one that defines how we're actually supposed to live out this faith? And that's when I started leaning more into the orthodox type of the Jewish world. Now, I'm still a believer in Yeshua, still a believer in Jesus, but now I'm looking for the rabbis as the authorities, as the interpreters that will let me know which commandments to keep and how to keep them. And at first, it seemed to be the solution because I was starting to see that there was more structure into what I'm supposed to follow. And in addition to that, I was again learning so much more. I was diving more into the Talmud, the Mishnah, the Zohar, the Mishneh Torah, the Shulchan Aruch, and all of these different type of Jewish writings that were amazing to me because they showed me a lot of the mentality of ancient Jewish people, modern Jewish people, the history, the customs, the traditions, and it helped me to also guide me in a way to live. So in the search for authority, I found myself in a pickle because I didn't know where to go from here. But then I got to thinking, Okay, I'm a believer in Yeshua, and I'm trying to see how the earliest believers lived. But I was not looking at the earliest believers in Yeshua. I was just looking at ancient Jewish people. So that's why a lot of what I believed was based on the Mishnah. But there was one big issue, that when it was interpreted by different rabbis, these things took different forms. And in addition to that, there was the matter of what do we do with the lack of priesthood, the lack of a temple, and the lack of the sacrifices. And nothing seemed to fit in. So that's when I started looking into what the earliest believers in Jesus practiced. And I'm not talking simply about what the scriptures say because of the fact that, as I mentioned previously, there's the issue of if you only go by what the scripture is saying, then you're missing a lot more and everybody can still interpret however they want. So after the apostles, how did Christians continue to live? When I started to look at this, I was also being mindful of what I had been told by many people, that Christianity became paganized at the coming of Constantine, and that what I needed to do was stick to anybody that came prior to him. So while I was studying the early church fathers, I stuck primarily to the pre-Nicene fathers. So these would be the church fathers that would be prior to Constantine's era. When I started to study these things, that's when I noticed some major factors that really set some alarms in my head, that being primarily the Eucharist. And the fact that people in these olden days used to see the Eucharist not simply as a ritual, but actually partaking in Jesus Christ's sacrifice in Calvary, and also as this being really his body and blood. And it really bugged me because of the fact that it sounded 
Catholic to me. Now, this is what sparked my journey into looking into Catholicism. And at first, it was simply to debunk the church because I could not believe that this was what I was seeing. So I needed to debunk it. And that journey took me a long time, at least two years in the process of trying to debunk the church, then finally admitting to myself, okay, it's making sense, to then saying, God, it really makes sense. You need to guide me here. And then to me becoming Catholic. Now, I do have another video that I will link down in the description below, which basically talks about why I'm still Catholic. And one of those primary reasons is actually the Eucharist. So make sure to check that out. If you have any questions as to why that played such a huge role into this journey of mine. Now, during the time that I was struggling with accepting Catholicism, of course, I had the issues of what about the papacy? What about the Marian doctrines? What about the scandals of the church? What about this so-called idolatry that the church is accused of? What about the fact that they think that they are eating Jesus Christ truly and really? What, what is this whole thing mean? And I had a lot of other debates that I had to deal with. And as these questions popped up, I researched them and I found my answers. These answers came through the form of either looking at other YouTubers or just simply reading. So things like the Didache, looking at the writings of people like Clement of Rome, Polycarp, Papias, Irenaeus, St. Ignatius of Antioch, the Didache, and of course, looking at the scriptures through a non-judgmental lens and simply reading to see what it says. And as I did this again, little by little, it started molding my mindset to accept all of these things. And I think the hardest thing for me to deal with wasn't even the papacy, had nothing to do with the priesthood. It was actually the Marian doctrines. And even understanding typology, which did help a lot, took another step for me to actually get that to click. And it was again me going to God himself and through prayer asking him, God, if what the church is telling me is true about Mary, and if everything else is clicking and this is also true, then you need to show it to me because it makes sense here, but not here in my heart. So I need your help. And obviously God ended up answering that. And this is why I'm Catholic and not just Catholic, but devoted to Mary. Anyway, that's a little bit of my journey. I know, again, that I had to skip through chapters of my life and not give a lot of detail and not a lot of defense, but that was not the purpose of this video. That was just basically to show you this funnel through which God took me, through which I, even though I had a Jewish background, I didn't know about it in the beginning. I was raised as a Protestant Pentecostal Christian and started experiencing these things that caused me to ask questions about why I believe what I believed. And I started not just asking questions, but really diving into my own heart and saying, you know, some things got to go. I got to change things even if they hurt. I have to cut myself away from people even if I love them. And little by little through this journey, I ended up where I am. And some people have asked me, you know, what if you end up Muslim next? What if you end up Orthodox Christian? But I can't go anywhere else because Catholicism is the only thing that makes true sense. And check out that video that I mentioned previously to understand why it is that I am Catholic and those things that are really the only things that matter at the end of the day. But even to get to those points, those elements that I'm talking about, it took a lot of researching, a lot of prayer, a lot of fasting, a lot of struggle to be able to get to where I am now. And I know that I'm not the only person that has gone through a journey like this. I know there's plenty of people out there and it's so amazing every time I get the opportunity to speak to or to even meet people that have gone through amazing journeys. So for those of you out there that have gone through that journey, give this video a thumbs up. Let me know a little bit about your journey down below. And for those of you that perhaps are in that journey right now where you are not convinced of the Catholic Church, let me just tell you that I come from a background that completely antagonized Catholicism and that looked at Catholics as idolaters. So I understand how hard it can be. But trust me, a lot of the things that I knew or that I thought I knew were completely false, off base, and told by people that were simply enemies of the church. But when you start seeing what the church actually teaches, when you start looking at unbiased history, things start to make sense. Now, does this mean that the church is perfect? Of course not, because we are members of the church. And if we are sinners, there's going to be sin around. But we are not Catholic because of the people that are Catholic. We're Catholic because it is Christ, Yeshua, the Messiah, the Son of God, that actually established the church. Anyway, I don't want to get into much of a rant. 
So I will cut this video off. Now, I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Make sure you follow this channel and follow me on Instagram at the Jewish Catholic. Have a blessed week. Shalom.